Okay, praise the Lord. It's good to be in the Lord's house. If you have your Bibles, uh, well, we're, we're going to turn, uh, we're going to begin in 1 Thessalonians, but before we get there, I want to talk a little bit. Uh, we've been, we've been uh, talking about prayer, about prayer. Uh, I, I believe that God wants His church to be a praying church. Uh, God wants His church to be a praying church. And uh, He said, Jesus said, My house shall be called the house of prayer. My house shall be called the house of prayer. Of course, after that, He said, You have made it a den of thieves. If you remember, when Jesus went into the, to the temple, uh, at the end of His ministry, He actually did it twice. He did it at the beginning of His ministry. And he did it at the end. They were in the temple and they were selling, buying and selling. They turned it into kind of a flea market. And uh, they, you know, Jesus went in and cast them out. And he said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. What, it's, it's, it's something to me that we have lost. And I myself have found myself times in my, in my Christian walk. I have found myself where I have, I have neglected my prayer life. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And uh, when we talk about prayer life, okay, prayer life, some people will say it's a spiritual discipline. Well, I don't think that's a good, I don't think that's a good definition. Because when we talk about prayer, what are we talking about? We're talking about communing in the spiritual realm. You know, when we have a conversation with one another, we talk with one another, we exchange information and talk back and forth, you know. Uh, that's what we do with God. And that's what, some people do that with other spiritual entities that aren't God, okay? Because any, any communication in the spiritual realm is, could be considered prayer. Uh, and, and I think when we, when we talk about it as a spiritual discipline, it really kind of, it's not a good definition. Because just imagine this. Just imagine I would wake up in the morning and say, okay, I've got to talk to my wife ten times today. Let's see, I'll talk to her, I'll talk to her, let's see, I'll talk to her around eight o'clock for around breakfast, and maybe, maybe I'll slip something in around 10, and I'll make sure that at the end of the day, I'm going to count and make sure I talk to my wife 10 times, you know, spiritual discipline, right? I've, I've got to get it, I mean, I've got to talk to my wife 10 times a day, right? Now, now that, wouldn't, that wouldn't work too well, would it? Okay. You know, we, we have open communication. Uh, in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I, that's where we're going to begin this morning, talking about prayer. I want to encourage us to be a house of prayer. We have prayer meetings on Thursday night. We have intercessory prayer meetings. We've been uh, the, the last Sunday of every evening, uh, uh, last Sunday of every month, Sunday evening. We want to make it a time of prayer and praise, a time of uh, uh, corporate prayer where we can seek the Lord. There are different kinds of prayer, and it's important for a body, a, a church, to be a praying church. But I, I say this all the time. If you're going to come here to pray, make sure you pray at home. Because God wants us to speak to Him all the time. He wants us to have a constant, open channel between He and us. See, that's why Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, uh, in verse 17, toward the end of that, uh, that chapter, toward the end of that letter that he wrote to the church at Thessalonica, one of his earliest letters, maybe, one, maybe the first letter that he wrote chronologically, he says this, three words, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Now again, I go back to the uh, example of Rose and myself. You know, we're not constantly talking to one another. Okay? I, you know, when we live in a house together and we see each other all day long. We're not constantly talking, but we're always open to talk, usually. Okay? <laughs> we are. We're always open to talk. Now, she, I, I'm, look, she's smiling, so I'm Okay? <laughs> I better watch myself. I've got to make sure that she's smiling back there. We're, we're always open to, to communicate. You know, we can be passing in the kitchen, and, and one will say, and we'll listen, usually. <laughs> we'll listen, and, and we communicate. Well, when Paul says pray without ceasing, you know, prayer isn't the constant, uh, you know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It's not that. It's that having a constant, open channel with God so that he can speak to us. You know, I mean, when we think of prayer, we think of us talking to Him. But prayer is a two-way street. It's us talking to Him and Him talking to us. Amen. So when the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Thessalonica, he said, pray without ceasing. He says, always never be in a position where God can't tap you on the shoulder. Never get yourself in a place, mentally or spiritually, where you're not open to hearing from God. I mean, we're quick to pray to Him. Let us get in trouble or in some kind of bondage and say, oh, Lord, you know. 
But he wants us to be as open to him as he is to us. He wants us to be, our ears to be open, our spiritual senses to be open, just as he is to us. Because there could be times God could speak to you. You could be walking down the street and God might say something to you. He might say, go talk to that person over there. See, if you're not listening, if you're not in that position of, 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 of receiving, then, then you won't hear him. Just like, you know, if I'm watching the news and my wife tries to talk to me, and sometimes I don't hear. You know, you know how, that, yeah, how that is. Some of you know how that is. We've got to always have our ears open. Always have our ears open. That's why Paul says, pray without ceasing. And the very next...